All right, so we're moving down this list. We know about graphs. We know what to look for in those graphs. Now we know how to describe them numerically. So now let's look at this mathematical model. All right, so to model, again, everything we're working with here is linear. Okay, so this thing called our regression line, that line that we kept drawing through those points that we thought kind of connected those dots closely, now we're going to define that line mathematically. All right. So the type of regression that we're using here is called least squares regression. And here is the formula for our line. It's just a simple straight line, right? Y equals our y-intercept. And B1 here is our slope. And one way to calculate that slope, take R, multiply it by the ratio of the standard deviations of X and Y. B0 there is our Y-intercept. Usually the way that's calculated is once I find my slope, solve for the Y-intercept using the mean of X and the mean of Y. All right, now these, these are ways of, so once I find B1, I do that, mean of X, mean of Y. These are ways of calculating beta B0 and B1, but again, kind of like R, because there's a lot that goes into calculating that. Usually we just want to leave that up to a computer. Okay, so let's go back to our example. Using pitchers to estimate time of game, turns out it's regression equation looks like this. All right, so how do I interpret that? Well, our line looked like this. So what does the slope mean? That 9.874 here. So basically what that means is for every unit increase in x, y is going to change by that much. So for our specific example, every pitcher I use, the game is going to run about 10 minutes longer. All right, what about the y-intercept? So that's telling us what happens when x is 0. So for our example, that was 99.397. Right, our, our slope is pretty useful, usually a pretty useful interpretation. Our y-intercept, though, doesn't always make a whole lot of sense. All right, and I, here in this example, it doesn't make a ton of sense because if we use zero pitchers, there wouldn't be a game. Right? So it doesn't make sense to say a game's going to be 100 minutes with no pitchers. Right? It's really only meaningful when it could make sense for x to be zero, and it's really only useful when we actually have data for what happens when x is zero. Okay, so we know how to interpret that regression equation, a little bit how to calculate it. We don't want to worry about that too much. But what's another use for the regression equation? Well, it's one of its biggest uses is to predict for given values of x what's going to happen with y. All right? Again, remember our example. What if I said, well, I want to know what if what's going to happen if eight pitchers are used? All right, we'll just plug eight in there. So if I plug in eight, I get the game is going to be right around three hours. All right, so to wrap up, just a couple basic facts about regression. A couple things we want to think about. Well, what if I flip-flop X and Y? Well, the correlation coefficient won't change. Your calculation of R, it, you were just multiplying stuff. Okay, so that won't change, but your regression line will change. Okay, so watch out for that. We mentioned that it's called our least squares line, and that least squares line does pass through X bar and Y bar. All right, so thanks for watching. We'll see an example of this in the future and expand on these topics later. All right, thanks for tuning in, and we'll...